Enjoy with your headphones for a better listening experience. Please watch till the end of the video to have the most scariest part of the story. Reddit, what is the most eerie thing that's ever happened to you? Episode 6. A really creepy guy used to come into a convenience store I worked at near my university. He used to talk nonsense about being the king of the night and stuff like that and said he could get anyone to do what he wanted them to. He was older and pretty charismatic and also had some money, but me and another employee would joke about him being hit in the head. Look out, you all, it's Glenn, the king of the night. We had video games at the store, and he would hang out there and play them or watch others and sometimes pay for their games. He latched on to this wayward college kid who was also a bit whack, and who always asked for matches, but never bought cigarettes. I worked the graveyard shift, so there was often nothing going on after 2.30 a.m., beer 30, so I would hear them talking, creepy arch pontification that made me wonder if they were playing vampire the masquerade or something. We had lots of that kind of LARP activity. Sometimes they would leave together. Later, the older man stopped coming in, but the younger guy kept coming for matches, enough that we started charging him for them. Sometimes he would burn them off in the parking lot. One night he came in and got matches, and a while later there was a big fire with many fire trucks headed the way the guy usually left. I found out in the morning that this guy had killed his landlord and burned her house down. He lived in the basement. The very next night the king came back and was extra creepy. Up until then I hadn't seen him in months, and he shows up the night after his little friend murdered someone. He brought it up and said that he was sad that the younger guy probably had to go to jail. I called the police about it right after he left and a couple times more, but they didn't seem interested, as they had already caught someone and got a confession. I only saw him one other time after that, years later at a concert where I was working security. He gave me the most twisted grin and walked off out of my sight. That man straight up gave me the chills. Though, come to think of it this might not be the creepiest thing I ever witnessed. It's a tough call. When my grandson was about four he would come over sometimes. He was obsessed with trucks of all manner, and he especially loved this one Tonka truck. He could sit on it and push himself around for hours. Anyway, it was a beautiful Sunday morning, and his mom dropped him off. He knew exactly where his truck would be, in the backyard. He was passing me by on his way toward the truck when I got an urgent feeling in my head. It's hard to describe, the best I can come up with is warning. It was so clear and compelling. Anyway, I said hold up buddy. I went trotted over to the truck and turned it over. You guessed it, a big black widow underneath the rim where he would have gripped it. I'm from NJ but moved to Baltimore a few years ago and if you don't know about Baltimore, it's bad city, 300 murders a year or more. I was doing HVAC and the main heavy unit goes in the back so my boss parked the truck in the alleyway. You don't go in the alleys in Baltimore you asking for trouble. Anyway it was noon, end up July, beautiful sunny day out. I was putting our tools back. I turn around I had a shotgun and 44 to my head. They wanted my wallet, keys, and phone. I told them everything was in the house thinking they would leave me alone. They escorted me to the back door with shotgun against the back of my neck. By the grace of God, the back door opened to the left, so as I walked in I sidestepped to the right, slammed door in their face the same exact time, ducked, locked the door, crawled through the kitchen. I saved a grandmother, daughter, three little kids that couldn't walk yet, my boss and myself. If they went into the house who knows what would have happened? My tire popped on the side of the freeway in the middle of the night and a small beat-up Honda pulled up to help me. When he got out of the car he told me he was with California Highway Patrol and would help me, and I thought it was strange he wasn't in an official car, but I thought maybe he was off duty or something. He gave me a little California Highway Patrol pamphlet, so I thought it was legit. I popped the trunk so he could get my spare, but he asked me to get out of the car and bend down into my trunk to retrieve the tire myself. As I was getting out of the car to get the tire a police officer pulled up behind us. The guy got really nervous and made some excuse that he could not help me with my tire because he didn't have the proper tools, oh had a jack and everything, and left really quickly. When I called the number on the pamphlet he gave me it was out of order, and when I saw him drive away he had Colorado plates, not California. I'm not sure that I was almost stuffed into my own trunk and murdered, but I often think back to that night and what would have happened if that cop never showed up. My brother had a dream in high school that he went to prom and had a car wreck and died. So, he said he wasn't going to prom. When he went to get a job, his social security card was flagged that he was dead and had died on the date the prom was. Every time he gets a different job, he has to prove he's alive again for social security. When I was working at Kroger, I was coming back downstairs from my break at around 8pm. 
I put my phone in my pocket and looked up as I exited the stairwell. This middle-aged, super pale, super hunchbacked guy with black hair hands me a zip-up journal bag and says can you take this to lost and found I said yes sure. As I'm walking to the service desk I look down at the journal. The sleeve was black leather drawn on it was a pentagram with runes all over. It had a massive demonic goat skull over the whole pentagram. I dropped it off and went to register. I worked my shift thinking about it the whole time. When I was off I went back to look at it and the service woman said it was never there. I thought I was weird thinking about it until I got home. My Christian friend texts me and says he got a weird feeling and he prayed for me. That freaked me out because he'd never said anything like that before. That entire night I couldn't sleep, and I heard creaking noises probably because of the wind. Or was it? I lived in a fairly big home by myself for a while. It was quiet being on a road of 5 to 6 houses and maybe 100 homes spread out in the area. As I lay in bed trying to sleep, the sound of footsteps pacing back and forth in the bathroom, it's a master bathroom so nothing can get in or out unnoticed. Nonstop, it goes on and on. The first time, I managed to summon the courage to go check. Only to find it's all quiet, then it starts up again once I get back in bed. Nah. Not for me. I slept on the sofa. This went on every night until my girlfriend at the time would come over and stay every so often. Any evening she was there, it never happened. I asked the landlord, and she suggested it could be rats or possibly birds got into the roof. She checked for both and no signs of either. Just before I was able to move, I had made plans to stay at a friend's house for drinks but felt something was off. Like I needed to go home. It was a nourish away yet I did and when I arrived, I found damage at the front door. As I walked into the hall and looked into the kitchen, someone was looking at me from outside right up against the glass, then they bolted. I was so glad when I got to move out shortly after. I was a really scared kid when I was little and there used to be this one costume shop where me and my family would go every Halloween. I absolutely despised it and would cry every time I went there. One night I had a nightmare about being forced to visit the place alone and it was burning down by the end of the dream. I remember being so shaken up by it I actually told my younger sibling about it. A couple of weeks later that same costume shop burnt down in real life. Literally no way anyone is going to believe this but here we go. When I was a kid, my parents went on a cruise and my brother and I were left staying at our grandparents' house. One of the nights we were up watching Animal Planet and our grandpa came in and told us to shut it off and it was time for bed. It was about 11.45 so we went to bed, but my grandpa left the hallway light on just illuminating the hall enough to see a little bit. Now the layout of the bedroom is substantially important to how this played out. You go down this hallway and at the end of the hallway is our grandparents' bedroom. Off to the left before the hall ends is the spare bedroom. The bed is in the back right corner and the rooms are open so you can see everything from the doorway. I woke up sometime later to my brother whispering my name and asking me if I see that and I look over to the doorway to see a woman probably mid-forties. She was very bizarre looking with an exceptionally long and thin face and long brown hair but imagine a hairstyle out of like the 70s? I want to say, just standing there staring at us. Her hair was blowing like there was some sort of gust yet there was no wind. Our grandparents' dog had been sleeping next to the bed and she woke up. Her ears perked like she acknowledged that there was someone but after a minute just laid back down. She just stood there staring at us for what felt like the longest time before eventually backing out of the doorway, her gaze fixated on us until she was completely out of view. Leaving the door slightly open, enough for us to see her go back towards the front of the house. For a while after brother and me just sat there absolutely petrified just waiting to see if maybe it was my grandma and she eventually gone back to the bedroom, but no. See nothing for what an hour was probably and eventually we fell asleep. We asked about it the next day and my grandma swears it wasn't her. Not that it would have been anyway as she looked nothing like who we saw and she's also not the type of person to really joke around like she doesn't like being scared. If I were the only person that saw this maybe I'd be able to brush it off and something that I imagined in some odd fever dream so long ago. But no my brother saw it too and if you were to ask him he'd tell you pretty much the same story. A few years ago, I took a trip to a small beach town on the east coast with one of my best friends. One night we decided that we wanted to take a walk on the beach, because there was a landmark of some sort of way down on the beach. So, we started our walk, which was going to be about an hour. There was literally nobody on the beach because this wasn't a super touristy town, so it was very creepy. In about 20 minutes we start to see lightning and hear thunder in the distance. We ignored it and kept walking. Not long after that, my friend and I started to get the subconscious feeling that we were being watched and followed. 
We decided to turn around and head back to the beach house because I knew something was off. We get back to Airbnb, lock all of the doors, and go to sleep. The next morning when we turn on the news we're in shock. Two dead bodies were found on the shore, murdered, exactly where we were walking. I knew that if we had kept going and not turned around it would have been us most likely. I tell this story very often to friends and family and it always freaks me out, even though it happened almost five years ago. My house is next to a patch of woods that are about six miles thick. The patch is surrounded by neighborhoods so it's common to see people on walks within the trails inside it. One afternoon I went to do my usual thing which was sitting in a particularly comfortable tree and reading. It was a Saturday, which is usually the busiest day for the area, usually there's people going all around the place. And that was true up until maybe an hour into my book I took a moment to look around only to notice just how quiet it was. I didn't hear anyone at all, which was very unusual. I kind of assumed it was just momentarily, I found myself waiting for someone to be in any way audible. I sat there for two and a half hours and didn't hear anything whatsoever. At this point I was feeling kind of creeped out with just how abandoned everything felt. I hadn't been paying attention to my phone which I left on the floor near the tree along with my lunch. I climbed down from the tree to pick up my phone, I had at least 40 missed calls and countless text messages from my family. But what really caught my attention was the emergency alert. My stomach dropped once I read it, a man had killed multiple people and was now roaming the town. The entire town had been locked down hours ago. I quickly gathered my things and ran back to my house. About halfway there I briefly saw a man standing nearby a neighboring home. I don't know what the guy looked like, but I just had this gut feeling he was the man. He didn't notice me, and I made it home safely. He luckily didn't get to anyone else within the time and was arrested soon after. I will never forget the feeling of reading that message. This still happens every now and then, but I always hear sounds in my ceiling, like something is up in our attic. It always used to just be tiny sounds and closer to the door of my room, right near where the attic ended. I always assumed it was just a small animal of some kind, but both my dad and I have been up there over the years to check and have never found an animal nor a way any animals could get in slash out. Just recently I heard a much louder, bigger thud followed by smaller noises, as if a human had fallen over and gotten back up. Except it was on the other side of my room, far from where the attic ends. It was around 2am and I was in bed on my phone, so you can imagine it would have scared me. Still no idea what it could have been. I work out of town. And every Sunday that I head back into the city, I would get really depressed. One Sunday was so bad that I couldn't get out of bed. Later that day, my dad wanted me to ride his motorcycle. I said no and thought, I'll let you die on it. IDKY. I hugged him and didn't want to let go. I still remember that hug. I was depressed every day that week. Then on Thursday I got coffee and at 7.15, I dropped it and thought, good dad. Later that day, my friend pulled me aside and gave me terrible news. My dad died at 7.15 that morning in a motorcycle crash. Some guy murdered him, and there is evidence proving that the guy had done it on purpose, but last I heard, he's getting away with it. I was an atheist prior to this, but ever since then, the universe has been challenging my views. I got another story that I won't get into. Around 2005, I was 8 years old back then, my family went to church exceedingly early in the morning since it was my baby brother's first birthday. Naturally, we went to eat at a fast food chain right after, and there was only our table and the other with customers a table away from us. The place was big and popular, in a mall that has its own entrance so they could operate earlier than mall hours. We were all seated and my brother was sitting on a high chair. Mom decided to take a video of him with her phone, a Nokia 3600. My mom suddenly went hey move your arms away from the baby. To my aunt who was sitting next to my brother. Aunt said, I'm not touching him. My mom was kind of scared as she was still seeing the arms during the recording, and her sister insisted it wasn't her. When mom watched the video, she showed us that there was an unfamiliar arm. I saw it clearly. It looked like an arm of a woman, with a hanging striped, red, white plastic sandal bag. I knew there was no one around as I was looking at my baby brother while my mom recorded the video, and no one was touching him. It looked so real no wonder my mom thought it was her sis, but the skin tone was darker than my aunt's and we didn't go there holding any plastic bag. We also showed it to the crew exactly after we realized it was a ghost. Since then, I believed in their existence. The video was never deleted on my mom's phone, but it was stolen at another mall. I wish I knew how to transfer stuff to PC, but it was the earlier age of computer desktops and dial-up internet. 
My late father lived about a thousand miles away. He had a close relationship with my son. One night at about 3 a.m. my then four-year-old son comes running into our bedroom crying hysterically about Papa, my dad. Took a while to get him calmed down and part of it was promising to call Papa in the morning. At 7 I got a call from my brother that my dad was rushed to the hospital at 3 a.m. with a major heart attack. My son knew Papa was in trouble. Me and my friend saw this abandoned house just off the trail from this park. This wasn't a usual park it had like a creek running through and trees everywhere almost like a mini forest. We decided to go home and get flashlights. It was 10 p.m. so it was almost pitch black and went back to the house. We saw a panel on the side of the wall was open maybe some people took the screws off the wood panel. I put we decided to go and keep in mind we're both 15 at the time so we were very dumb. We go in and it's dark, but I look farther in and there's a light bulb on in the room at the end of the hall. I tell him hey Alex that light is on should we go see? And we walk a bit but then hear a noise and run out. We hear something louder and keep running for our lives. We run and run and we have to get over the creek and there's two ways either walk over a fallen log like a tightrope kind of thing or jump over some rocks that were laid out. We went across the tree because it was faster to get on our bikes and made off never even looked back for a second. Now about a few weeks to a month later my friend Alex and three others go back to that park to hang out and they hear screaming from the trees and they bolted. When we went with everyone, about a big group of 20 people, back the next day to the park we saw a bag of clothes and shoes in the creek and upon closer inspection there was what appeared to be a lot of blood on the shirt. From that day on we always made sure to avoid that park and never anywhere even close to it. It was I do not know if it was a sick joke or if something happened but I'm only glad none of us got hurt we probably should have called the police, but we were too focused on getting out of there and processing it to even think about that. When I was 15 I was downstairs watching TV when I heard very loud, heavy breathing coming from outside the window around the corner. From where I was sitting I couldn't see the window at all, so I had no idea who it was. I thought it might have been the wind moving in a very strange way or someone pulling a prank, but it went on for over 10 minutes. The entire time I was paralyzed in fear and couldn't bring myself to move at all. I eventually texted my brother to come downstairs because I was too scared to make any noise and as soon as he came down the breathing stopped. To this day I have no idea what happened, but it was probably the creepiest thing to have happened to me. Second short story, I was looking out my window which faces my neighbor's house. I could see their window but since it had a blind down I could only see the shadows cast onto it. I then saw the silhouette of a woman projected onto the blind as she walked past. Then she walked in the opposite direction back across. Then again. Then again. Then again. This repeated for like 4 minutes until I got too creeped out and left. Maybe she did it on purpose as a joke, but she had no way to know I was there. A friend and I were walking into a mall one time and a cab driver got out of his car and followed behind me and said my first name. We got to the second set of doors, and he said my full name. When we got into the mall through the last set of doors he said my name and be careful when playing with a knife. My friend and I kind of freaked out and asked him if he knew me and he just looked blankly and did not answer. We got out of the store and decided to go back and ask him what, but his taxi was gone. I've had strange things happen to me most of my life. One example I remember that was really strange but witnessed by at least two dozen other people happened when I was in college. I was a sophomore living in my fraternity with about 30 other guys and our grandmother like house mom who had her own apartment on the first floor. One night, around 1 am I woke from a sound sleep choking on heavy smoke. I ran all over the three-story house, with a full basement, and checked everywhere for a fire. I even woke up in a poor house. Nothing there. No fire anywhere. And only I smelled smoke. No one else woke up smelling anything. They thought I was having a nightmare. The next night the same thing happened. I go through the same activity waking up a bunch of guys in the house mom. Again, no fire anywhere and they all attributed it to a nightmare although I know I wasn't having nightmares. Next night the same thing all over again. Now they're getting annoyed with me. Next night I slept soundly all through the night. I was the last guy out of 30 to wake up. When I did all the other guys were very troubled. I and everyone could smell smoke. The fraternity house just about a block away from us had a bad fire around 1 am one or two students even died. My friends all looked at me and asked how I could sleep through it. There were fire trucks, smoke everywhere and sirens blaring all night. None of it woke me. We never spoke of it after that, but all my fraternity brothers knew I was trying to predict something, but I didn't get it accurate. I always wondered what the point in is having such a predictive gift if it doesn't help anyone. 
It really annoys me that I couldn't help anyone avoid that tragedy. Something told me to beware of a fire, but it didn't tell me where or when. What a shame. So, many people are familiar with the dark man as, I've heard it called. Where you see a tall man in all black in your periphery but, when you turn to look there's no one. What happened to my best friend, we will call him L, and me was similar to that but different in some significant and creepy ways. It was a hot, and cloudless August day, three other friends, L, and I were playing hack sack in front of my L's house. L was to my right in the circle. One of the people across from the two of us was juggling the hack sack and we were paying attention for when he'd pass it. As we watched, I felt and saw in my peripheral vision a void. Not a person, just an empty yet roiling blackness. I yelled and leapt to my left to get away and turned toward the void to get a look at it. Only thing I see is L. He jumped to his right and yelled at the same time I did. I, of course, asked if he saw that. He's like, nope leave everything about that, doesn't say anything more on it, runs into his house and says he's staying in for the rest of the day. It was like 3pm the other three had an idea what we were talking about. They hadn't seen a thing. This happened close to 30 years ago and we still talk about it from time to time. Either of us has any clue what that could have been. I didn't believe in ghosts or anything like that, until one night I played a Ouija board with some friends and kept getting a specific four letter name. Fast forward about two months. So, I've had a couple random things happen. At work I had an entire shelf that was anchored fall, my door randomly slammed shut while I was watching TV, TV randomly turned off while I was watching it. I didn't really think much of it. One night I was asleep, my room is upstairs in my house, and my girlfriend had already gone home, I felt something crouch down onto my bed, and started whispering into my ear, nothing understandable to me anyway. I was freaked out, but I waited roughly a week to tell my girlfriend about it, and when I did her eyes went wide because when she had stayed the night previously, it sounded like someone was walking up the stairs and started trying to turn the doorknob. I keep my door locked, and she thought it was a potential burglar, she woke me up that night and just said someone was outside so I would check. Had one of my friends who is a Mormon elder and I think priest come and bless my house, and then we burned sage, hung sage, and salted all the windows. Haven't had anything happen since don't know if this counts but was walking to the cinema with my girlfriend and we stopped at a crossing and pressed the button to cross. There was a car coming but it wasn't too close and although the light hadn't changed yet we just ran across the road quickly before the light was red for the car to stop. About 5 seconds after we crossed the exact same car went straight though the red light exactly where we would have been standing if we had just waited to cross properly. I usually sleep with my rabbit next to me, he always jumps up from the bed and lies there all night. Once I had a strange dream it was like a nightmare, which I don't have, but in reverse, I was the one hunting, torturing, and killing others. I never had such dream before and as I torture one person, she screamed so loud in agony and I immediately woke up to a sound of my rabbit going ballistic across the room frightened into shelter and stomping like crazy, while I lie without any movement with closed eyelids. Confused about what just happened a scream in my dream scared my rabbit. About three years ago my friend invited me to help watch his uncle's place, as his uncle traveled occasionally for work. This place was like an hour outside of our medium-ish city, so honestly it was a nice getaway from civilization during a really stressful time, so I excitedly said yes. After I arrived he told me he only invited me because he'd been hearing the move in the house for the last two days. I took a look around the place, and it was certifiably creepy. The nearest houses were almost out of eyesight, and there was a graveyard across a field way past the backyard. While playing games that night, we heard something in the kitchen move, and we both went in to investigate. We didn't see what moved, but while we were both kind of scanning the kitchen, we both saw at the same exact time a toolbox just scoot along the floor. It was one of the strangest things I've experienced, and I thought really hard about how it could have rationally happened. We drank it for the next two days and he never saw that place again. I woke up suddenly from a deep sleep in the middle of the night to what my brain thought was a severe storm hitting. It all happened in a few seconds, and I don't know what actually woke me, but there was a very bright flash of light, actual light, I saw shadows on the wall, my ears were popping and the trees were creaking and making snapping noises from high winds, and my cat was losing it, making a strange crying noise while darting in circles at the foot of the bed. I had bolted upright before I knew what was happening, but it died down just as suddenly. I was completely out of breath and took a moment to look outside, but the sky was perfectly clear. 
I had to comfort my panicky cat, who definitely wasn't reacting to my reaction I used to have stress dream nightmares and wake up yelling and she would look at me like how dare you, I was sleeping. I cannot explain it to this day. I was at a B&B in London and had an incredibly lucid dream about my friend from high school that I had spoken to on and off but hadn't seen for about a year or two. The next morning drinking coffee I looked through the guest book and saw his name from about 10 months earlier. His handwriting was unmistakable. I took a picture and sent a text, I also had a crazy dream about you while I stayed here. A few days later his sister texted me back from his phone. He had apparently died the night I dreamt of him. The universe is a strange place. I remember being 6 years old at my aunt's house in the summertime in Winnipeg, MB. Shared a bed with my mom. The door was on the right beside the bed. The bed was facing the closet which was half open all the time. I had a tough time sleeping. So would gaze into the darkness of the closet. One night I saw a set of red eyes looking back at me from the top shelf, didn't think much of it. Next night saw two pairs of red eyes. Okay, getting a bit scared. Never woke my mom up the first two times. The third time these two sets of eyes came out of the closet towards me. I woke my mom up and said, do you see that? She did and turned the light on. After that happened, I was so sick. Pukey sick. When my mother was a teenager she was walking the family's dog in a huge park near her house. When she was there she saw a young woman wearing a floral headscarf and sunglasses. The woman fixed her gaze on my mother, smiled whole turning towards my mom. Took off her sunglasses to show that she had no eyes, just black holes where they should be. People literally just saw my mother freak out and run home that day. She couldn't tell anyone what she saw. Years later when I am two-thirds I wake up crying. I describe the nightmare woman who did a jump scare and was cackling at me. It was the same no-eyed woman, though in my nightmare she rapidly aged from being a young woman to old in a matter of seconds. It's the only dream where years later I can describe almost every detail. While walking home from school I was whistling the Rocky theme tune, all the way to my doorstep. I walk into the house to see my mom watching Rocky. Another time I was listening to music on my phone with my earbuds and decided to start watching Ozark on Netflix instead. Normally when you start playing different media the music will stop on its own, as everyone knows. But the series started playing, in the middle of an episode, where I last left off, and the music continued. I checked my phone and the music had stopped. The exact same song was playing at the exact same position in the series too. The song was Cold Little Heart by Michael Kiwanuka. In the 7th grade, my grandma who had dementia, was kind of nearing the end of her life. We all knew it was going to happen within the next year or so. She was 93 and had a good run, just wasn't up and about like she used to. I was in a school assembly about 9.30 am I just remember getting a weird twinge in my chest and had the thought it's time. I shot up and ran to the principal's office and asked him to use the phone because my grandma is about to die. The principal and I were well acquainted, I was a troubled kid, and I spent a lot of time in detention with the guy. I'm guessing my face or voice was enough for him not to inquire, because he just handed me the phone. My mother had been staying with grandma, making her meals, and cleaning her up, etc. She answered the phone, typically what's going on now, honey? I cut her off and told her to check on my grandma. The phone was silent for the longest minute of my life, and when my mom spoke there was a long sigh and pause. I just watched her take her last breath. She's not with us anymore. My grandma was an amazing lady and had an enormous impact on my life. We spent a lot of time together and were remarkably close, so to me it makes sense that I had some sort of feeling she was departing. Spent the rest of the day in her room waiting for the folks from the morgue to pick her up. When I was an infant one night I woke up crying bloody murder with blood everywhere. My parents found a hole straight through my tongue. There was nothing in the crib, not even blankets. My dad took the crib apart piece by piece to attempt to understand how it could have happened, but we have no idea. Perfect hole as if I were pierced. I didn't have teeth at the time but even if I did the hole was in the middle of my tongue, where a tongue piercing would be, and too perfect. I still have a scar. A few years ago, when I used to live with my aunt, she was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer and had begun to die. When she wasn't in the hospital and at home, she would wear this black and pink Hello Kitty nightgown, I guess it was her favorite. After she had died my family and I decided to move out of the house, and we started to pack all of her things. When I was carrying a few bags out of the house one day, I swear that I saw her standing over her bed in her room with her Hello Kitty nightgown. 
I walked past it without really realizing what I had seen, and when I fully comprehended what I saw I looked back at her room and there was nothing there but her boxes. I've never told anyone in my family this because they hate stories about ghosts and paranormal things, but I'm sure that I had seen my aunt that day. I work for a hospital and usually spend time working in old retirement homes. I am a cook, so it was around 7 a.m., and a water jug flew off the top shelf in the kitchen. Hair stood up on my neck. The other cook said one morning he woke up and the cooler door which is air sealed tight all the time flew open, and he is a big guy, he said he was creeper. At another place, it was at nighttime. Two care aides were working and a nighttime janitor. So, at some point one of the ladies heard a voice say hello, can you help me please? So, she radios back to the other girls, and nobody is even near the area she was in. Everyone else was in the break room opposite where she was working. It was an old folks home built on the grounds of an old hospital. In the basement is old dirt instead of concrete from the early foundation of the hospital. That's where the morgue was. The place is spooky. Growing up, my house was apparently haunted, although I hardly ever had anything happen to me. It was mainly my parents who saw slash heard things. One day after coming home from school, I was alone, so I hopped onto the living room computer to play some Minecraft. I'm in the middle of cave exploring, with those creepy noises playing randomly, when out of nowhere I hear a little girl giggle in the hallway. It sounded playful but still scared the hell out of me. I turned off the computer, closed and locked all the doors, then sat on the couch watching cartoons until my parents came home. I used to live in a house with poor AC circulation, so I would often have my window open, even when I went to bed. It had a bug screen, so I was never worried about anything flying in the room while I slept. One night, I was close to falling asleep when I heard a buzzing, like a bug in the room. I ignored it until it got louder, and it felt like it was getting closer, so I swatted my hands around hoping it would just go away. It got close enough that when I raised my hand to swat it away, I felt something heavy roll on my palm and hit the wall with a loud thud, like I threw a tennis ball. I immediately got up and turned on the lights only to find nothing in the room, not even a mark on the wall where I thought it hit. After that, I got a small window AC unit and never opened those windows again. I got invited to a wedding. Needed a ride because it was a few states away. I said sure, we drove down on a Friday, wedding Saturday, drive home Sunday. We knew we're going to drive home over the night, so we took a nap during the day for a few hours. It was a little after 9 that night when we left. It was about 20 minutes later on the highway, we came up on this lilac colored fog. Like real light purple, light pink color. It looked weird but not unnatural really. I remember slowing down as we came up on. We looked at each other a few times and saw another car come out the side of the fog cloud. We said leave it, window up and run through it. We passed through it in under 10 seconds. Shared a weird look with each other and off we continued. I can still remember and recall a lot of details from our drive down, but neither of us really remember that drive home at all. We both have the same memory of sort of waking up in a parking lot in our home state. No idea on when we got there or why we didn't finish driving home for 2 hours home or so. We both remember three or four gas station stops we made, and we can remember conversations we had while we waited or at a rest stop we stopped at for a bit. But neither of us can remember pretty much anything that happened in the car or the drive itself for that entire eight or so hour drive to where we ended up waking up at. We still talk about it occasionally and have never had a satisfying conclusion. Freaks us both. I have dreams where I am visited by people who have died, and they usually have messages for me to give to loved ones. I one time dreamed that a man came to me and said I just want you to know that it didn't hurt. It just felt like a Charlie horse in my chest. I was then awoken by my wife to tell me that my father has just died of a massive heart attack. Oh, three days earlier he dreamed that he had died and was joyfully reunited with his whole family. Two stories, the first happened when I was a teenager, the second a couple of years ago. I used to feel uncomfortable regularly in my parents' old flat, apartment. It was on the top of its block, with the only thing above us an attic that we had access to and needed a tall ladder. For years I used to hear footsteps above me at nighttime, like heavy military style boots. The flat already felt rather creepy. The worst occasion was when I sat up in the evening playing games on my computer at the back of my room. I began to feel incredibly uneasy and felt as if something or someone was staring at me and watching me. This feeling emanated from the same spot in the room each time, a spot near the door. 
It was so intense that I kept turning around and looking at this spot over a period of time whilst on my computer because I felt so uncomfortable. Eventually, I decided to get a glass of water from the kitchen. I grabbed my glass and went to walk out of my room. An important note here is that we had two cats at the time, neither of which made any remote habit of being near my room often. I had to walk past the spot I felt something in to get out of my room, and as I did I froze at the sight of both of my cats sitting in the hallway, staring into my room. Both cats briefly looked up at me, then looked back to a spot in my room, the exact spot where I felt something was watching me from. I freaked out and spent the rest of the night on the sofa in the living room, not sleeping at all. My cats never bothered to sit there and watch again, nor did I ever get that feeling, at least not that intensely, ever again. 2. A couple of years ago, myself and my girlfriend, now wife, were looking after her mom's dog for a while. I would often walk the dog if she were at work and I was off, or she was unable to for any reason. Nearby to us was a little wood that we used to go through. This wood was split into two distinct parts, with a fence separating either half, all public access though, the path wasn't blocked. We walked through the woods, both halves, dozens of times before. On this particular occasion, it was just me and her dog, a Springer Spaniel, so not small and quite confident. We'd happily walked through the first half of the woods and were approaching the second half, where the fence ran up next to the path. My stomach dropped. I suddenly felt incredibly uneasy and uncomfortable. I was staring into this second half of the woods and simply had this gut feeling that I absolutely should not go into it no matter what. One thing that stuck with me here as well, is that the dog, who is usually walking slightly ahead and trying to lead the way, was also not keen on going forward and wanted to turn around. We did just that, turned around and went back, walking rather quickly and looking back on myself as I was going. When we'd gotten back I couldn't shake the restlessness and it actually haunted me for the rest of the day. I felt fear and paranoia for the entire day, to the point where the paranoia made me skeptical of my own girlfriend that evening when I was trying to sleep as if she was planning to physically hurt me. I don't know why, and I couldn't shake it at all. I eventually got to sleep, woke up and all was fine. That sickening feeling had gone. The next day in the woods that feeling wasn't there. I do, however, remember a weird smell coming from that half of the woods whilst walking through it not long after, like the smell of death. There were also random small animal corpses that began to be hung on trees around there every now and then, rabbits etc. It was a horribly strange sensation, and one I'd be happy not to experience again. It felt like danger and that I had to get away, and I'm extremely glad I trusted my gut. A few years ago, I was spacing out on the couch when I heard my mom call my name from her room. I answered back and after a moment she poked her head out her door looking very confused. She explained that she was folding laundry when she looked up and saw me standing outside directly up against her bedroom window with my back to her. She was wondering what I was doing and called my name. But when I responded from the living room she said the me outside her window kind of slowly slid off to the right without moving. We were the only two people at home that day and we assumed maybe it was someone outside who happened to look exactly like me. Naturally, I checked around the house and didn't find anyone, but there's a major problem with that theory. Her only bedroom window looked out onto the carport. And directly below her window was a giant gas grill that was bolted to the foundation. Whoever was standing there would have been standing inside the grill and slid sideways through it in the fence next to it. Funnily enough, despite my mom being super into the paranormal we both immediately decided that it must have simply been a hallucination. It actually happened several times over the next month. Always me and always with my back turned to her. And yes, we talked about going to the hospital over it but if I remember right she never did, and it eventually stopped. Never happened again. Still with every skeptical bone in my body the idea of someone close to you seeing a copy of you where they shouldn't be is enough to make you shiver. So, when I was like 9 to 10 years old my grandparents and I had just left Walmart and went to McDonald's to get some food for the drive home. We went inside and I used the restroom. My grandma said she would wait for me outside the door. When I came out she was gone. She wasn't in line, in the dining room, nowhere. I thought not important, I'll just go to the car where my grandpa was waiting. Maybe she is there? I went outside and the car was gone. Like totally gone. Just a couple of cars in the parking lot. I start to freak out and go back inside and ask the worker if she had seen my grandma. She said no, you walked in just now and that's the first time I've seen you but there's been no old ladies here. I started to panic as something just felt completely wrong. I grabbed a pay phone in the vestibule, was the 80s, on the opposite side of the restaurant and called my grandparents' phone number at their house. A man answered. No one should have answered the phone. 
No other men lived there. No one should have been home. I lived with them, so I knew. I got scared and hung up the phone before I could say anything. I ran back inside and through the restaurant to the doors on the other side of the building where I'd originally come in. I looked outside the door and there was my grandpa sitting waiting exactly where I left him. Then I turned back and there was my grandma coming towards me at the door with a bag of food. We went to the car and left like normal. I'm not sure what happened during the time I was inside the restaurant, but I can without a doubt say, the car was gone when I looked, my grandma was not in the restaurant as I was looking for her and a man did answer the phone at their house when I called. It was like I warped out of reality for 5 minutes then popped back in. Short and sweet, being on an unlit stretch of coast facing beach that was several miles away from the closest major source of light. The family had scored a weekend at a well-off friend's beach house down by Port Aransas, Texas. There's a natural reserve area south of which called Mustang Island. Because of its existence as an unpopulated slash mostly rural part of an otherwise busy coastline, the stretches of beach there have less infrastructure and, at that time, had no seaside lighting whatsoever. I woke up unexpectedly late at night and couldn't fall back asleep, so I decided to go outside for a smoke. It was the first night we stayed there, and I hadn't realized that the only ground level door was one of those button combination locks and so I was locked out. In one of those perfectly inconvenient situations my phone had also begun to die and by the time I started my way back inside it had died. It was late at night, close to 5 am so I thought maybe I'd be able to just nod off in the doorway or something but decided I might as well go see the beach at night, something I'd never really done before. It was also either a cloudy night or a new moon so considerably dark. Got past the sandbar and all I could see was pitch black. It was so uncanny the immediate and obvious concerns of a lone person being out on an unmonitored stretch of beach didn't really register. The hutch of houses the place we were staying in did have a lot of lights but behind the sandbar they were almost non-existent. That was genuinely the most unsettlingly, hauntingly alluring experience of nature I've had. The image of the sheer blackness compared to the yellow-orange streetlights behind the sandbar is seared into my brain. I mean when I say it was beautiful, but I don't think I ever want to see a body of water unlit ever again. A few years back, me and my mom were going to have a movie night and decided to have a quick run to the gas station for snacks. We got to the end of our road when we saw two very bright lights rotating around each other in the sky, almost like searchlights, overlapping each other. A car comes pulling up behind us and sees it too, as he had a passenger, and they were pointing when I looked back at them. The strangest part was yet to come. The lights shot up into the sky and vanished, and both of our cars just died out of nowhere, almost as if we had been tempted. This lasted for 20 seconds before the people behind us could crank their car, and we could too shortly after. We had a good long talk with the people behind us about what had just transpired. To this day, I have no idea what happened. For a little bit of context, I have a history of sleep paralysis and I used to have night terrors and sleepwalk a bunch as a kid. Haven't done it in ages though. A couple of weeks ago I was asleep, but I was suddenly aware I was dreaming and needed to wake up right then I started panicking because in my dream, I was looking at my dark bedroom and there was a horrible shadow figure thing standing over me, but I was still asleep and couldn't shake myself out of it. It started reaching down toward me and I felt like I couldn't breathe. Suddenly I opened my eyes, gasping for air. But I wasn't laying in my bed. I was standing in the exact spot the eerie figure in my dream was, standing over my bed. I was super confused and freaked out standing upright like that. My cat was pushed all the way into the corner of my bed all puffed up and freaking out. She's a really laid back lovely cat usually and she took a while to be comfortable enough to come back near me. Still makes me uncomfortable to think about. When I was a teenager in the 90s, for a few months weird unexplainable stuff started happening in the house. Scratching noises, taps suddenly turned on full blast when I was the only one home, toilets flushing by themselves, the radio suddenly switched on but only playing static. It always happened when I was the only one around, so I thought I was just imagining things. One night, however, I heard a man's footsteps, but I got up and checked and there was no one there. Yes, I am that character in the horror movie that dies, lol. Anyway, this was all super weird, but I never told anyone. I don't know why but I honestly thought my mind was just playing tricks on me. Especially cause one day it also just all suddenly stopped. No more weird stuff. I lived there for 3 more years, and my mom still lives in the house, and I stay there once a year. 2 years ago, after the covid lockdowns I went to visit my sister who is 2 years younger than me. We're both around 40 at this point and for the first time we start talking about the weird noises in the house we grew up in. Turns out she heard them too. 
She told me that her and her friend decided to do a Ouija board one day and thought they were talking to something, some sort of male spirit, or God knows what. Apparently after the Ouija board session the noises and weird stuff started happening. My sister heard the things I heard, but also heard footsteps on the roof. The thing she told me that creeped me out the most was that one day she was getting ready for work and was quickly vacuuming her room. She accidentally vacuumed up a pair of underwear, and pulled apart the vacuum to find them, and went through the dust bag, but they weren't there. She was like leave this, I'm going to be late so went to have a shower. She came back from the shower to find the underwear laid out on her bed, completely clean and not like they'd just been in a vacuum. Apparently my sister's friend got so freaked out about everything that she told my mom. I had no clue if any of this had happened, so of course at this point in the conversation with my sister I was slightly freaked out, so I messaged my mom and asked her if she remembered anything weird happening in the house when we were teenagers. My mom is almost 80 now and religious. I expected her to say she didn't remember anything. But she said she remembered the cats meowing at the ceiling a lot, and she also experienced the tap slash toilets flushing. When my sister's friend told my mom that her and my sister had done a Ouija board together, she went to the library and did some research, and in her words prayed, and cast the spirit into the river, there's a large fast-flowing river a block from our house, I knew nothing about any of this. Just that for me, the experiences started, and then suddenly stopped. I'm actually a little freaked out typing this because it's just so bloody unbelievable. TL, DR, my sister did a Ouija board at our childhood home when we were teenagers that resulted in our house being haunted for a few months, and my mom prayed to cast the spirit into the river and the haunting stopped. Last summer my son and I were out driving, and I was telling him about when I was in my elementary school band back in the early 80s. My current band was playing an acoustic show and I had brushes, for drums, in the front seat of my car, which is what prompted the discussion. They were the same pair of brushes I got back in fourth grade. I told my son how three of us in the school were drummers, and I was the one who really practiced, another kid kind of practiced, and a third kid never did so when we had individual lessons with our band director. It was always rough because that kid couldn't read the music and our director had to very gently prompt him as to why that was important. Sometimes he would cry, which was hard to be around in a tiny rehearsal room. I went to a large school system, and I hadn't seen this guy since high school graduation, but I really didn't interact with him much in middle and high school. He wasn't a friend, and I hadn't thought about him much in decades, no more than any of the other people I had limited connections with during school, or talked about him over the years. As we were pulling into the place we were going to, my phone started to buzz in my pocket. As soon as we parked I pulled it out and a friend from school had messaged me saying that guy had died in a car accident the night before. My son and I were both really freaked out, and I still am when I think about it. My native place is in a very rural type of area, away from urban places and some unexplainable things happened when I visited last year. Firstly, whenever I went to sleep at night, 4-5 to five hours in, there would always be a weird knocking on the window in front of the bed that would last for around a minute or so. The curtains were always drawn, but whenever I woke up to this knocking I would either be too scared or try to go and investigate. And then there was this paranormal activity going around the house rocks and pebbles were thrown out of literal midair, at the heads of my relatives. And I tell you that it didn't have any explanation, the cameras only caught them just flying out of midair, almost like there was someone invisible throwing it intentionally at the residents of our house. Then, I was playing chess with my cousin when a huge rock, the size of my fist fell beside me from above, where there was nothing but the smooth, plain marble ceiling. If it would have fallen a little bit to the left I would have been injured. And then the thing that creeped me out the most was whenever the sun went down, these cats who lived near the house started making eerie sounds, not normal purring but it almost seemed like they were warning us of something. After all these events we called priests and installed better security, and these episodes have since reduced since. I honestly had no belief in ghosts until this incident. My two older brothers and I are alone in our grandparents' house since both of my grandparents and my parents went to a church service around 5 in the morning. The religion my family belonged is a local religion that lets you attend church early in the morning though there are also services in broad daylight. My brother slept inside my grandparents' room while I slept in the living room, not enough room back then. I already woke up as the adults prepared to leave for the church service so by the time they left, I was already half awake. My grandparents' house has basically three partitions which are adjacent to each other, the kitchen, the living room, and the single bedroom, grandparents. Additionally, the house's flooring is made up of wood, and the flooring is not directly attached to the ground, it was sort like of hanging more than a meter above the ground so human footsteps would make stumping sounds. 
Remember, we lived in a safe and tight-knit rural community, and we still had no electricity back then so the only light source inside our house was a gas lamp placed right outside the doorless grandparents' room where my older brothers slept. Since I was already close to fully waking up, I was basically just staring at the ceiling while still lying in bed. Occasionally, I would stare right at the single lamp illuminating the entire house. But after minutes of staring at the entire room I was in, I noticed that the curtain that serves as the door for the kitchen was moving intensely. I first thought it was caused by a wind, the curtain was moving for a few seconds. And then suddenly, a dark silhouette was moving inside the living room I was in, without lifting the curtain at all, which scares me a lot at this point. I thought it was a burglar, but I suddenly noticed something, the silhouette was floating since I didn't notice the floor shaking or making a sound while the figure was moving from the kitchen to the living room. The dark figure slash silhouette is completely black, no face can be seen or what. It's like a human shadow walking in three dimensions. The moment the dark silhouette entered the living room it turned its completely dark face. It looks like a human's face shadow. We know it's a face because of its outline but the facial feature is not there, right to me. The dark figure was staring at me probably for a very few seconds, but it felt like a whole minute to me. Then it proceeded to the single lamp that was put outside in my grandparents' room and the figure was blowing on it like it was trying to put out the fire produced in the lamp. I didn't count how many blows the figures did since I was literally scared. I was so scared that I couldn't dare to speak not even a single sound. After like a full minute, I think, the dark figure, unable to put out the fire, walked right through the kitchen curtain without making a single sound throughout the whole incident. I kept my silence, since I didn't know what it would do to me if I made a single sound. I didn't even move my body even for many minutes after the dark silhouette left. I calmed down the moment I knew the sun was already rising. I slept right after it Lamau. I did tell my brothers and parents what happened, but they dismissed it as either my own imagination or I was just lying lol. I knew this was a messy story. I'm not a native English speaker so my story might not be as coherent you're expecting it to be. But it was a genuine experience of mine when I was still 7 or 8 years old. I'm not a religious person at all, in fact I've been excluding myself from the religion that my family raised me in. For all these years, I've been trying to find answers to what happened that early morning. I had never experienced such a thing before and after that incident so even after all this year, the memory still sat vividly inside my head. When I was about 10 my mom picked me up from school and told me she had some important news. Before she could say anything, I just looked at her and said, Stan's dead isn't he? Stan was our next door neighbor. He was pretty old, but he hadn't been ill, and he had indeed passed away suddenly and unexpectedly that day. I still don't know exactly how I knew. It was weird because I said it so matter-of-factly that it was almost as if it wasn't me saying it and my mom was completely gobsmacked. He was a lovely old man, he and his wife were like an extra set of grandparents, so I was pretty devastated when my mom confirmed it. This didn't happen to me, but I've heard the story many times. My husband's parents had a picture of Jesus on the cross hanging on their living room wall when he was a kid. One day his mom found a picture of a flower with a dark red slash black center at a yard sale. The picture was particularly big, but my husband noticed in that dark red slash black area it looked like an evil face was looking back at you. He showed everyone because it freaked him out. She didn't think anything of it, so she hung it on the wall directly across from the Jesus picture. The next morning there was a cigarette-like burn that completely burned a hole on Jesus' face. They still have the Jesus picture with the burn in their shed. Late one night after work, I was walking home from a train station. I had to walk through a commercial shopping area, all the stores were closed and there was no one around. My neighborhood is generally safe, and at this point in time I had not experienced anything unsure but for some reason I was on edge. When I walked past a gas station, I saw three men standing beside the building and immediately felt that something was off. I had an unshakable feeling that they were going to try and hurt me. I am a small woman, so the number of guys was extremely alarming. I quickly changed my direction and hurried towards a grocery store which still had its lights on. I noticed one of the men started following me. I moved faster and another guy, who appeared from behind a corner of a building pretty much out of nowhere, was also behind me. Luckily, once I made it to a well-lit area and called my husband, they stopped and loitered near a random car, then went back to the gas station. The feeling I had before was so eerie and the fear of being followed is indescribable. Unfortunately, this is not the last time I have had to deal with something like this, but the feeling I get beforehand has saved me each time. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, 
share and subscribe. The Internet Surfer on YouTube for more horror and scary stories.